Hello everyone and welcome back to Brooksburg Zoo. Let's have a look at the habitat that we created in the last episode, which was on the release day of the Tropical DLC. So we built this beautiful habitat for the Fusa. And we also started to build the layout or yeah, most of the building for our uh, Madagascar house. And today's episode, there is going to happen a lot. So, what are we going to do today? We are going to finish the whole Madagascar house. This means we are going to have a habitat for the ring-tailed lemurs that are going to get the habitat right across the Fusa, so on the other side of the house, which is almost the same habitat with a little bit of uh, different uh, indoor decoration, outdoor decoration and stuff like that. But size-wise it is completely the same as the habitat for the Fusa. You can already see it here. I did the backdrop in there as well and I also did the outside as well. So the next thing that we are going to build is the indoor habitat for the red rough lemurs. That is going to be opposite from the entrance to the building. The red raft lemurs are going to have only an indoor habitat. I decided I didn't want to have an outdoor habitat for them. Um, yeah, rather having a new stuff area at the back side of the building. So that's what we did or what we are going to do today. Then the next thing that we are going to do is, you have already seen I did the work for those exhibits, those fake exhibits in the middle of the building, where we are going to have yeah, some smaller exhibits for some smaller Madagas... Madagas... Madagasian... Malagasy for some smaller mammals from Madagascar. Let's say it that way. I think that's easier. Um, and I decided I wanted to have these two exhibits dedicated to the Malagasy giant rat. Is it Malagasy giant rat? I think so. That's the correct name. We will see it later in, the, uh, in this video. And the second one is for the lowland striped tenrec. That is an animal that almost looks like a hedgehog, but um, is a little bit different uh, than a hedgehog. It's like a crossbreed from hedgehog and rat or mouse. Um, also size-wise, because these are very, very small. So, uh, yeah, that's going to happen. And the last thing that is going to happen is, or the second to last thing that is going to happen is we will have some decoration in the building as well with plants and stuff like that. And the very last thing that we are going to do in today's episode is we are going to build the roof for it. And let me tell you, I'm going into it later as well. The roof was such a pain. It was an absolute nightmare to do this. Um, yeah, but in the end I managed to do it and I'm very happy how it turned out. I just would recommend you to not look too close at the roof because, uh, yeah, as I said, it was a nightmare. But we're going into that later on. I have as well something to tell you guys you might be very happy about it or some of you at least so if you want to have the Madagascar house in your zoo and play with it you can do that because I put the house on the workshop I had to put it in the workshop as a habitat <coughs> because it uh, simply is too big too many pieces alone these uh, backdrops here with this uh, stalactites fake rocks roots and plants and stuff like that do have lots and lots and lots of pieces so uh, you can uh, you can easily imagine how many pieces the whole building must have but yeah you can download it from the workshop you will find the link in the video description so you can enjoy it for yourself 
So here we are building the indoor habitat for our ring-tailed lemurs. I just wanted to have the backdrop on the right side of the habitat as well because I thought the whole thing looked a little bit too empty and I didn't like these white walls everywhere and to shake that up a little bit I just put the little backdrop here as well. So the next thing is going to building some climbing structures for the animals and then do some rock work, some tiny rock work, not too much in here and some planting. I experimented also with those new plants. You can see in the backdrop as well, I used the fern and um, some other of the plants. I really like them. I just wish we would have more of the new plants in the tropical pack. I imagined that we would have so much more of them, uh, but in the end it's just like, uh, let me think about it, one, two, three, four, four or five of them, so it's not that much. And I am not sure if I like this one here, because this is a lot of work to put all the pieces together and um, Yeah, I'm putting in the work when it comes to my buildings and I totally get it that you have, takes, uh, t that you have to take some time to uh, get everything together and make it look nice and stuff like that, but I'm not used to putting plants together, so this is something that I don't enjoy that much. Maybe this will change in the future and I will do that more often, but uh, right at the moment I'm not too happy with it. So uh, as we are talking about new stuff from the DLC, uh, let's talk about some new stuff from the update. So we got this new thing when you are placing items down uh, or building parts. You can already see here we got this extended uh, thing to move the objects and uh, yeah. First question to you guys. What do you think about it? Do you like it? Do you think it is useful? Or do you hate it? Or do you say you just don't care? Um, my opinion of this is, and um, I had uh, that, uh, not the discussion, I uh, I've seen it from other content creators as well as uh, the lady designer for uh, for example um, we had the talk where we both said it's annoying sometimes so um, I said that I'm glad that I usually don't do live streams because the amount of curse words that I'm using now when I'm building things has massively um, uh, increased since the update. Yeah, you can make out of it uh, what you want to make out of it, but uh, yeah, that's the thing. So um, yeah, I'm very curious uh, what you guys think about that. Also, the null path that we got in the update. Yeah, it was in the update. It was another thing from the DLC. It was in the update. I was very excited about it. Um, don't get me wrong. They are pretty cool if you, uh, if you use it on terrain. But if you do something like elevated path, you still have this side pieces on this new path and um, yeah this was the main thing that I was looking forward to by using them that you don't have to do terrain work like I did here with the building I don't have to um, not lower what is the opposite of lower to lower something to expand no yeah, you know what I mean. When I need higher terrain for the building, so if I have stairs go into the building, uh, I want to use an elevated path 
so that I don't have to put the terrain on top of it. Uh, that I don't have to put the path on the um, elevated, elevated terrain. Elevated was the word. Uh, was the word. Yeah, so this was a little downer for me. Um, so some of the things that I was looking forward to the most in the free update just turned out to be cool, but not that great as I thought they would be. So there's that. Uh, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with the new DLC, with all the pieces that we got in here, with the new animals that we got in here. Um, I didn't use many of the new pieces yet. Um, I think I didn't use any of them, especially in this building, but we are going to use some of them, I think, in the next building. So I asked my community in um, on my Discord what they want me to build next in Brooksburg Zoo. Because once the Madagascar house is finished, we have plenty of room for doing something different. Um, you will see in the next episode that I did some work off screen. I did something that I avoided doing for a long, long time. Um, yeah, I did something in the entrance area. So we are having something like a is it the correct word in English when I say we have something like a castle garden? Um, I think you know what I mean. Let's call it the royal gardens. That sounds nice. Yeah, we do have royal gardens in the entrance area. I think it looks pretty cool. You will see it in the next episode. Um, yeah, but we have to do something afterwards. So I was asking whether if they wanted to have some kind of islands that we are going to use for habitats for the gibbon and uh, the siamang or if i should build something like a house for the pygmy hippos what i'm talking about a lot or what i was talking about a lot in the past so for the pygmy hippos uh, the red river hog and the nyala and most of though uh, most of uh, the people in my community said that I should start building a house for the pygmy hippos. So that's what I'm going to do and I think we are going to use at least some of the new pieces that we got in the new DLC. So I'm very excited for that and um, I'm looking forward to use some of those. Um, I have to say I was a little bit disappointed that I, uh, as I was building the castle garden because we do have something in the new DLC that is like withered wood um, so we do have some pretty small pieces in there which were so perfect for some things that I built in there but I noticed that they are not recolorable so this was a little downer for me because I was so happy to find these pieces because they were exactly what I needed but they were in the wrong color so I couldn't use them and as I said they are not recolorable so yeah okay but let's get back into the actual build that is taking place right here you've seen we finished the first habitat which was for the ring-tailed lemurs and I had made the layout for the red raft lemurs as well off screen already so we have this little fake waterfall in the back I noticed at the end of the video uh, or as I was recording this voice over here that I did not put some rocks around uh, the waterfall but in the end I don't think it is that much of a problem so uh, I would like to have you guys tell me in the comments if you think it is a problem or if you think it is okay like uh, the way I did it here because I think it would make sense if I don't put any decoration around it to cover up the artificial parts of it. Yeah, but as I said, let me know in the comments if I should do something like that. And um, I would be happy to do so and update the building in the workshop as well afterwards.
And if you download the building from the workshop, I can only recommend you to look at my videos where I was building the habitat for the Fusa in the last episode and also the complete video uh, like this so that you get to see where to put the barriers around and uh, where to lay down the path and stuff like that so that would make it easier for you to use the building exactly the way it is supposed to. So after laying out the barrier for the red rough lemurs, I built something like a little itty bitty teeny weeny <laughs> on a Lulu and so on. Um, no, uh, backstage area, staff area for our staff. I'm using some of the regular items that we already got from the conservation DLC as well as some of the new pieces from the tropical DLC where we got these new boxes and uh, cardboard stuff and uh, things like that which were a great extension to the things that we already have in the game. There's some great pieces in the, in the new DLC I have to say. Yeah, there's not too much in there because we only do have very very small spaces in here for our keepers but I thought it would make sense to have at least a little bit of it in here. I wish I had built and planned that out a little bit better because that would have meant that I would have been able to have something like a real do you say food kitchen in here? I think you know what I mean. Uh, some place where the keepers can prepare food for the animals and have a little more room. But yeah, in the end it's just those two small little staff areas. One here and one at uh, the other side of the ring-tailed lemurs. So that's all we do have in this building. And also, as I said, we have the staff area on the back side of the building that I built off screen because I thought our staff is too overwhelmed at the moment with all the other things going on in our zoo with uh, those two habitats for the okapis, uh, the bongos, the African wild dogs, the warthogs, and the blue wild uh, wildebeest. I'm always saying wildebeest the blue wildebeest so I thought it would make much sense to have the very own staff area for our staff that are taking care of our lemurs and the fusa in here. Yeah so once again here little climbing structure for our red rough lemurs and once again I was very happy because I didn't look at the animal stats from the Zoopedia uh, where there is uh, noted how much space the animals need and how much climbing space and stuff like that. I just planned it out in my head and thought okay this might be enough for them at least in real life when you have a real life zoo. And um, yeah, in the end, as I put in the animals, as uh, yeah, the ring-tailed lemurs as well as the red raft ones, it definitely was enough space in there. The animals didn't complain too much. Uh, they were all in the green um, with their needs and everything they wanted. So I'm very happy about that. So there's nothing I needed to change in here or turn off. Uh, yeah, turn off the animal needs in the settings. Yeah. So once, upon, uh, once again some climbing stuff in here. I was a little bit shook uh, or a little bit surprised, not shook, it was uh, a little bit of a surprise as I put in <coughs> 
sorry, as I put in the red raft lemurs in the habitat, because I put in like uh, six of them, I think it was. So I put in three males and three females, uh, which wouldn't be a problem in real life. But in the end, I had some of the new feature in, uh, in the game that we also got in the update. I had some outsiders because the Zupedia actually said that it was only possible to have one male and like, was it 12 or 14 females? I think it was 12. I, I don't know right now. And I thought, whoa, okay, this is not how it is in real life. So in real life, it would not be a problem to have more than just one male with all those females. So I had to um, sell at least one of them again. I couldn't sell the other one because it was sick at the moment. So I think I have to sell the other male as well. <clears throat> so that we won't have an outsider here or an animal that doesn't feel comfortable with all the other animals in there. Um, yeah, so I was a little bit surprised because it was not the case with the ring-tailed lemurs, which would be more of a problem because they live in a matriarchy family, so um, you have uh, the females leading the group, so uh, you would have more females in, uh, in the group of ring-tailed lemurs and not that much males, because males always do have a very tough situation in uh, those lemur groups. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. There was no problem with the ring-tailed lemurs, but with the red ruffed ones, and uh, so it is what it is, I said it. So here we are going to build the fake exhibit for our Malagasy giant rat. Uh, I didn't look at the uh, at the sign. Yeah, it was right. It was right. Could you see it? Malagasy giant rat. You will see later on. Um, yeah. So they are endemic only to Madagascar. So they, uh, they only live in a small spot there, which is on the... Is it on the east coast? Or on the west coast? Um, I just don't know. It is one little spot on the island where those animals live and they are pretty, pretty um, much endangered because yeah, they are, as I said, they are only endangered there and Madagascar is such a beautiful island. It is, it is a paradise, but you have the problem as you do have with every place on this earth where you do have rainforests or stuff like that. Um, so yeah. Madagascar has a huge problem with deforestation and also um, I built some education ports in there as well that go into that a little bit deeper so if you are interested in that uh, I can um, I, I'm going to upload the custom billboards as well on the workshop uh, or a link to it so um, yeah deforestation and also poaching um, so lemurs were hunted for uh, for food and um, also for uh, for the fur and stuff like that. And this this is really 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 sad because Madagascar is a little bit like Australia because it has such a unique. Um, fauna and flora. So there are so many animals that live on Madagascar that only do live there. So there's no other lemurs on, on any other place in the world. Um, lemurs only do live in Madagascar. So, and there's so many of them. Most of you guys might know just uh, those uh, ring-tailed lemurs, red raft lemurs, black and white raft lemurs, but uh, there's so many more of them. There's uh, Sifakas and Indris and 
bamboo lemurs. I don't know if it is the correct word in English, but in German they are called bambus lemur, as in bamboo lemurs, which means that they are feeding on bamboo. You have those small uh, markies, uh, which are really really tiny, and um, the eye eye, which is very a very scary looking creature. It's almost looking like a troll or something like that. Yeah, so many unique animals that are really on the verge of extinction because of... Yeah, they have no room left to live in. Because everything gets destroyed, uh, deforestation and uh, poaching and stuff like that. It is, it is pretty sad because I just don't know when will all this stop or will it ever stop or will it only stop when there is nothing left what is worth fighting for so yeah as i said very 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 sad okay but let's get into what i'm doing here you can see i did a second uh, exhibit for uh, the tenrec which is a little bit of a different habitat so we have a more tropical jungly vibe rainforest vibe so i used different plants and also different uh, different uh, material on the ground so i was going for the terrain color uh, soil and I also put in some mulch pieces in between to make it look a little bit more natural. I think that did the job very well. Yeah, and here you can see I misclicked on the new angle, so this was very annoying in times. Yeah, and here those two exhibits are finished. Some more decoration around it, some rocks and some plants in here. I decided I wanted to have this a uh, little bit like uh, like a desert in there with cacti and grasses and bushes and stuff like that and also with a little palm tree uh, on the left side right to the fusa so I didn't want it to be like a rainforest house we're going to keep that for something like uh, South America or uh, if we're doing an Amazon house or something like that once we get more South American animals, because there's so much of them still missing, and yeah. Yeah, and here we are at the last part of our building, which was, as I said, a real nightmare, because I decided I wanted to have these pieces for the roof, which are grid pieces. I really don't like to work with grid pieces at all, um, because they are limiting everything so much and uh, yeah, I just don't like that. But I did it and um, the grid pieces weren't a problem at all. The real problem was the shape of the roof. As I decided I wanted to have a glass roof and I wanted to have this kind of arches or bows or whatever you might call it. And yeah, that was pretty difficult. Wouldn't have been that difficult if I would have left it with just one of those arches. But yeah, it is me. So I wanted to have two of those arches that cross path in here and that was just not doable, at least not for me, to make it make sense when those two pieces did meet. I'm not an architect or something like that, so I didn't know what to do um, to make it work. So in the end, it, uh, it just is what it is. I think it doesn't look that bad and I am uh, I'm okay with it I'm happy with it 
no I'm not happy with it uh, I'm happy with it when you look at it from the outside because it looks really uh, really really good when you look at it from the outside but if you have a look at it from the inside and especially if you have a closer look at it you see all the problems with it and uh, yeah so I'm okay with it I'm not happy with it but yeah I think in the end it still is a pretty cool thing So I tried to build something like support for the roof because when you know me or if you know me you know that I was very critical <coughs> sorry um, for the building contest that I started um, a few months ago here uh, which we are going to announce winner on this Wednesday and um, I was very critical for everyone that took part in their roof building skills because most of the times I did say okay um, you don't get all of the points for realism because the roof that you built wouldn't hold up in reality so this put a lot of pressure and uh, one of my community people said um, she was going to have uh, a traumatic experience from that because all the time she's going to build roofs now she has to think of that and has to make uh, to walk the extra mile and because she she always thinks of me saying this roof wouldn't make sense or wouldn't hold up in reality so uh, yeah that uh, that also put a little bit of pressure on me because I was thinking if I say that this roof doesn't make that much sense and wouldn't hold up I can't do anything that is yeah not working out so I had to come up with uh, some of this support uh, structures here um, using those metal pieces from the Europe DLC and um, yeah I don't know if this roof would hold up in reality I think it might but once again I'm not an architect but I think it looks it looks pretty nice Yeah, so once this roof is finished, the whole building is finished and the complete area here in our zoo has changed drastically. Um, I really, really love how it all comes together and as well as when you are entering the zoo and walking towards the Madagascar house, it looks so cool. And here we are in the real-time part already. The house is finished, the animals are in, so let's have a look at all these beautiful creatures and the beauty that this house is. I'm going to leave you <clears throat> I'm going to leave you alone with a little bit of music and the animals and hope that you guys did like it. As I said, if you want to play with that house yourself, go to my workshop. You will find the link in the video description. You can download this house as well as those um, a custom billboards and um, I hope you enjoy it if you enjoyed the video just leave a like subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any further episodes of Brooksburg Zoo and also of Litchfield Zoo my other sandbox series and hope to see you guys in the next video as well oh and well one more thing we finally did it we do have more than 1k subscribers you guys did it and I'm so happy with that I'm so proud of that and um, I have to say uh, to say a huge thank you to all of you for subscribing to my channel next part is 10k <laughs> okay so guys enjoy the rest of the video see you next week bye